Now, Boris Johnson described planned strikes by the RMT as reckless and wanton during Prime Minister's questions this week. It was after the union announced three days of national strike action, with over 40,000 workers expected to stage a walkout over job cuts and pay freezes. Labour leader Sakir Starmer has said he believes the strike should not go ahead, but his party had been accused of being conflicted on the issue, with shadow levelling up Secretary Lisa Nandy saying Labour are on the public side as well as on the rail workers' side. Well, we're joined now by RMT General Secretary Mick Lynch. Mick, thank you for joining us this morning. Now, there's been a lot of kickback, hasn't there, about your proposed strike action, saying it's going to completely shut down the country and put undue pressure on workers who are already facing a real difficult time because of the cost of living crisis. How do you respond to that? Well, workers are facing undue pressure because their companies, including the railway, are not giving them a pay rise. The vast majority of people in this country, uh, particularly public sector workers, have had wage austerity brought in by the Tory government, even since Osborne and Cam- the, the Osborne and Cameron duo, and people are suffering. They haven't got enough money. Uh, they can't afford to, to heat their homes. They can't afford to eat in some cases, and maybe they can't afford to clothe their children. So what's happening is that the business class in this country is putting people in, into impoverishment. We've also got the reward that while our members were working and Tory party leaders were partying, uh, they've been now been faced with massive job cuts. Thousands of jobs have been stripped. And in in order to do that, they're going to cut back on safety standards. And we're also faced with what is essentially an internal fire and rehire, where all our conditions will be ripped up. So our members are angry, as are many other British workers, and they need a response to that. We need a pay rise, we need job security, and we need decent working conditions from companies. A lot of the rhetoric, as you will know, around this dispute has, has been, especially from the RMT's critics, has been, you know, well-paid train drivers simply out to, to feather their own nests even more. This is what this is about. I mean, that's a bit of a lie, isn't it? I mean, this, this dispute is encompassing a whole range of workers, many of whom are nothing like train drivers. That's my understanding. Am I right on that? You're correct. I mean, this myth of the high-paid dr- train driver and that every rail worker is in that position is a Daily Mail and Tory graph fantasy, and GB News has no trouble putting out that myth as well. The vast majority of people in this dispute are on very modest salaries. The median wage of a railway worker that we cover is £31,000 a year. So they need a pay rise. That is not uh, that is below the national average, as I understand it. It's below the mythical nurse that everyone... Uh, points to they're on an average of 33,000 I understand and there's also this myth put about that is somehow if a rail worker does not get a pay rise that the bosses in this country are going to transfer that somehow to bin men and uh, care workers and nurses and other people who are underpaid and are being exploited the fact is if we don't get a pay rise the rail companies who made 500 million pound in profit last year on the poorest year for the railway in, in history will make even more profit going forward. And the railways will recover, and we need them to recover because they're an essential part of our transport future, uh, both in terms of carbon emissions and getting rid of congestion and moving goods and people efficiently and cleanly around the country. So Grant Chaps needs to stop threatening people, uh, keep changing the the rules halfway through the game. We've complied with the anti-trade union laws, uh, and we'll get on with our dispute if there's not a settlement. We're in constant discussions uh, with the companies and will be this week. We were last week. And we will look for a settlement that our members can live with. But at the moment, we've had no no offers. And our members, many of them have suffered a pay freeze for two and three years. And that's not acceptable. So, Mick, you, you talk about kind of being on the side of workers and clearly you're there to represent kind of RMT union members. But what about workers in other fields who are going to struggle, if not find it impossible to get to work, may completely lose their wage packet? Like, how on earth do you justify this to them? Well, our members will lose their wage packets. I mean, our members are going to lose three days' pay that week. Yeah, but that, so that, that's a choice to take part in the strike, well, though, whereas others question, are being affected without that choice. I'll finish it, if you like. You want me to finish or not? You can be combative, Mick, but, you know, I think it was a reasonable comeback. Would you like me to finish the question before you ask your next one? Okay, so all workers in this country need a pay rise. It's your government, I think you're an MP, who's driven down wages in collaboration with the employers. They have deliberately suppressed public sector pay. And if they hadn't done that for a continuous period, we wouldn't have people who are so poor 
they have to make a choice between eating and eating. We've now got a country where the uh, average age uh, life expectancy is falling. That's that's the job of the Tory government that's brought that in. We cannot be blamed for other workers being exploited by bosses in this country while there are more billionaires than we've ever had and the rich have never been richer. Dividends are being paid out. Profits are being recorded at record levels. And what business needs to do, the business community, is think about the exploitation they're imposing on people and give them a decent wage. Now, we're part of that, and I hope the Labour movement can recover its uh, its founding principles that all workers united together deserve a square deal of corporate Britain. And I hope that other unions can rally around what the RMT is doing and stand up for the ordinary worker in this country and get them a deal. But with respect, Mick, you didn't actually answer my question there, which is how do you justify taking away potentially other people's earning capacity here by stopping them from actually getting to work and accessing those opportunities? Because your well, workers have, have made a choice to no, join the strike, but others choose, haven't. Their employers could choose to pay them if they wished. That's the choice that the companies would make to deduct their pay, isn't it? I know, but you're so taking you away their the ability to actually their access their workplace. Well, are you saying that the company should deduct their pay if they can't get to work? Is that what Sometimes you're Sometimes it happens. Sometimes people are on those sort of contracts where they only get paid for the hours that they turn up and do. It's a business's choice. It's an employee's choice to take a part in one of those contracts. But you are stopping them from getting to work. It's not a choice. They're the only contracts that are made available. And the, the Tory government has made those very readily accessible to cut, uh, companies all over the country. So the gig economy, casual work, vulnerable work, precarious work, is all a part of the, the lack of legislation that continuous governments have failed to bring in to protect workers in this country. Companies don't need to deduct wages. They can give them alternate methods. They can uh, give them loo days. They can do all sorts of things. So they don't need to lose a pay because of the RMT strike. It's up to the companies to make that decision. And it seems to me that the rhetoric that yourself and others are putting up is whipping up a storm against a legitimate, lawful industrial dispute that's very simple. If we get a deal on pay, if we get a deal on job security and we maintain our conditions through negotiation, we won't have to have an industrial dispute. So, Mick, there's this new potential plan now from Grant Shapps and the government to actually get agency workers on board to maintain some real minimal level of service. What's your response to that? Well, it's illegal at the minute, isn't it? And Grant Shapps should defend the rule of law, but now he's threatening to change the law in order to, to break an industrial dispute. I don't think it'll have any particular effect. These regulations have been in place for a fairly long time. I think they were brought in by the Blair government. And they've been completely ineffective. People are using these in disputes already, which is against the law. So rather than saying that he's going to change the law every time he's at a disadvantage, what he should do is, is unshackle the companies and fund the railways correctly so that we can have a settlement to this dispute. And then he wouldn't have to keep running back to his backbenchers who are foaming at the mouth, virtually asking for effective uh, industrial action to be banned in this country and emasculate workers all over so that they can open the way for, for more exploitation. And it's the same with everything. If they can't make enough money or the money they like out of the current legal setup, they'll change the legal setup so it can exploit people even more. So he ought to concentrate on something else rather than changing the law every other week. Well, Mick Lynch there, the General Secretary of the RMT, joining us to talk about the proposed rail strikes.